everybody and welcome back to Music with Meg. I'm Meg and today we're going to be talking about how to practice your instrument. Music with Meg. First of all, congratulations on deciding to learn a musical instrument. You're about to unlock a skill that you will keep with you for the rest of your life. Your musical instrument wants to be played really well and in order to do that you're going to need to put a little bit of work in. So, how do we practice? Well, let me tell you what I do to practice. Now, before we set our practice routine, let's think about why we want to learn our instrument. We're going to set a practice goal. I might want to be fantastic at the piano so I can play like Elton John. I might want to pass my next grade on my violin or learn a new piece on the accordion. Choose a goal and write it down. Try and pick a goal that's achievable. I'm never actually going to become Elton John, but maybe I could pick a piece of music he plays that I love. Let's be honest, sometimes our reason for practicing is to avoid a nagging from our teacher or from our parents, but you're way more likely to pick up your instrument if every minute you spend practicing is a minute closer to your goal. Now we are going to aim to practice for 30 minutes a day, five days a week. If this sounds like a little bit too much for you, then start with 15 minutes and you can work your way up. It's more important to practice every day than to practice for a long time one day. So find yourself a good space to practice in. You want your space to be free from distractions, to have plenty of space to practice your instrument comfortably, and you'll need to make sure you have all of your equipment with you. This should definitely include a music stand and a pencil, and you might also want to have a mirror so you can look at your posture while you're playing any other bits that your instrument might require. Use a chair if you need one, but if your instrument is usually played standing up, then make sure you play it standing up as this is going to give you the best posture. Before we begin, we're going to set up our instrument, make sure it's in tune, and make sure we've got a really good, comfortable playing posture. Now, we're going to split our practice time into three sections. Section number one, scales and arpeggios. I'm not gonna lie to you, I don't really enjoy playing scales or arpeggios, but I know that they're very important for my technique, my intonation, and also my understanding of music theory. And in the end, they're gonna help me play my instrument much better. So make sure you dedicate at least five to 10 minutes at the start of every practice session to scales and arpeggios. Now usually I just pick one or two keys to work on per session and it usually makes sense to pick the key that your piece is based in. If my piece is in E flat major, I'll practice my E flat major scale and arpeggio. Before you begin, remind yourself what sharps or flats your key has. Now we're going to start off slow because there's lots of things to think about here. Number one, we want to make sure we're sitting or standing correctly with a good posture. Number two, we want to focus on our intonation. Are those notes in tune? If you're struggling to find a note, go back and correct it and then start again from the beginning. You can think about whether that note is a tone or a semitone from the previous note and this should help you fix it. Fingering. You need to make sure that your fingering is comfortable and that it stays the same every time. This is how we get that muscle memory going and scales will become easier and easier. You need to think about your bow or your breath control and make sure you've got enough bow or breath to get through the scale. And finally, focus on consistency. Aim to keep your scale the same every time. The same tempo, the same fingering, the same weight. Try not to have any shifts in dynamic or tone throughout the scale. If there are any points where you keep getting stuck, go over them over and over again until they become unstuck. Once you've aced the scale, you can move on to the arpeggio and we're gonna work on it slowly, doing exactly the same things to practice that too. If you're absolutely flying through it, then that's a good indication that you've nailed your scale. So feel free to pick another key and move on to that scale and arpeggio instead. All right, let's move on to practice section number two, tricky bits. This should be the bulk of your practice session. Now, when I was learning to play the piano, all I ever wanted to do was practice the bits I was really good at, and I never wanted to practice the bits I found hard. And as a result, 
I ended up getting better and better at the easy bits and worse and worse at the hard bits. When it came to playing the piece all the way through, I could never keep the same tempo because I was constantly slowing down whenever I got to the tricky bits. Now an easy fix for this is to only practice the tricky bits. As tempting as it is to start from the beginning every time, we're not going to do that today. How do we identify a tricky part of our music? Usually these will be pretty easy to pick up because when you're playing the piece it's where you begin to slow down or stop. If you can't play it well and consistently, that's a tricky bit. Your tricky bit should only be one to four bars long. If it's any longer than that, then I'd recommend breaking it up into two or more different tricky bits. Here are some tips for your tricky bits practice. Number one, practice the jumps or position shifts. If your tricky bit has any jumps or position shifts, practice these 10 times slowly. Just practice moving between the previous note and the new position and don't go any further than that. Practice that 10 times and you'll soon be getting it. Number two, practice your hands separately. This is especially important on the piano. You can practice your right hand five times, your left hand five times, and then hands together five times. If your tricky bit has any difficult breathing, bowing or fingering, practice this separately. If it's a bowing technique, you can practice with the right hand only. If it's a fingering technique, you could practice just the fingering hand without your breath or bow involved. Here's a tip for practicing tricky fingering. Whatever the notated rhythm is, we're going to turn this into a dotted or swung rhythm. And this will help in the end to speed up any tricky sections. It's particularly useful if we have lots and lots of quavers in a row. So we'll do short, long, short, long, short, long, short, long, until it feels comfortable. And then we're gonna swap that swung rhythm round. Long, short, long, short, long, short, long, short, long, short, long. It might confuse your brain a little bit, but if you can practice this way five times with each swung rhythm, then it will really help you to speed those fingers up in the long run. Finally, make sure you're playing slowly. Never ever try and play a tricky bit faster than you're able to. It's much better to practice slowly and then eventually you'll be able to speed up as that muscle memory sinks in. So once you've worked on all of the tricky parts, the fingering, the breathing, the bowing, whatever makes your tricky bit tricky, then you're gonna practice your tricky bit all together five times super duper slowly. And this way you'll hopefully be able to see what bits still need work and what bits are sounding better. Then, once you've done all of that, leave it alone. Even if it's still not perfect, just leave it be, because all of that practice that you've done is gonna germinate inside your brain, and you might find that tomorrow, it started to sound better. Now we're ready to move on to the final part of our practice session, and I like to call this your reward. Your reward is playing the piece that you've been working on all the way through, tricky bits and all. Take your time and try not to rush. If it helps, you could set a metronome to the slowest time that you can play the tricky bit and play the rest of the piece at that speed as well. When you're playing, really think about those lovely sounds you're making, the harmonies, the dynamics, all of the different textures of the music, and try and enjoy yourself. Don't worry if you make mistakes. We're gonna try and keep going and move past the mistakes. I always like to end every practice session playing an old favourite piece of music that I know I can play really well. This helps to remind me why I love music and why I want to play my instrument. Finally, I'm going to make a plan for tomorrow's practice. I'm going to mark any tricky bits that might have come up in my playthrough in pencil on my music. And if you've aced your tricky bits today, you might consider rubbing those out and picking a new tricky bit to work on tomorrow. Now I've collated all of these practice tips and more into a PDF on my coffee page, which you can find at coffee.com forward slash music with Meg. I'll also be sharing more tips on how to set a practice routine and more practice techniques for different instruments in the coming months, so keep your eyes peeled. Thank you so much for watching Music with Meg. As always, remember to like and subscribe to my channel so you'll know when my next video comes. 
And remember, you can find me on Instagram at musicwithmeguk. Happy practicing, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Bye!